Hey everyone, today I want to talk about the dangers of diet soda. Now there's a lot of reasons that you don't want to drink diet soda, especially if you have cancer. And the artificial sweeteners are one of the reasons. The caffeine is another reason. And of course there's carbonation can stretch out your stomach and make you want to eat more. You just, you don't want to drink diet soda. So let's go over that. Um, number one, diet soda promotes obesity. Did you know that? And I'll go into detail about each of these. So um, drinking diet soda promotes obesity and weight gain. Diet soda imbalances intestinal bacteria. Now this is a big deal because 80% of our immune system resides in the gut. Number three, soda with artificial sweeteners diminishes immune function. Well, obviously this is problematic if you have um, an increased cancer risk or if you have active cancer. Aspartame particularly, which is an artificial sweetener, decreases brain function. And this is because it turns to formaldehyde in the brain. Number four, diet soda increases the risk of developing cancer. So let's get into each of these reasons individually. I'm going to share my screen. Diet drinks contain sucralose. You'll know this is Splenda or aspartame. Um, which you would know as NutraSweet, Equal, or Spoonful. They are implicated in obesity, an increase in cancer risk, gut flora imbalances, and diminished immunity and brain function. Well, how does drinking diet soda promote obesity? Studies have confirmed that those who consume diet beverages gained more abdominal weight per decade than people who drank regular soda. And this weight gain corresponds with metabolic imbalances, changes in gut bacteria, along with its effect on the brain, namely alterations in the appetite control mechanisms. Add to this the fact that diet soda is not only addictive because of the caffeine and artificial sweeteners, it intensifies food cravings rather than satisfying them. And I know this is counterintuitive and is particularly sobering considering the public has been told the exact opposite to the detriment of our health. Diet soda does a number on your gut bacteria and this includes both aspartame and sucralose. They are both known to damage gut flora. We have a teeming ecosystem of microbes in our GI tract, and these microbes are imperative for good health. Artificial sweeteners adversely influence health by promoting imbalances in intestinal flora. The gut microbiome is integral for synthesizing vitamins, aiding in detoxification and promoting healthy immunity. Processed foods, antibiotics, and artificial sweeteners are all harmful to the gut microbiome. Your health will take a hit anytime this vibrant ecosystem is damaged. Artificial sweeteners diminish immune function. 80% of the immune function resides in the GI tract. This means that whatever impacts gut flora will also directly affect immunity. Aspartame specifically is a chemical stressor that leads to an increase in corticosteroid levels, lipid peroxidation and free radicals. And this increase in turn results in variations in cytokine levels which alters immune function. Cytokines are molecules within the immune system. Artificial sweeteners have been found to suppress the secretion of interleukin-6. And this is an endogenous chemical that is associated with inflammation and B cell maturation. B cells are part of the humoral immune system and they produce antibodies against extracellular antigens. Blood cells exposed to sucralose under stressful conditions were found to reduce interleukin-10, which is another marker of humoral immunity. This suppression of both interleukin-6 and interleukin-10 
may correlate to the inability of the immune system to mount an effective humoral immune response when faced with external threats. Diet sodas can reduce brain function in part due to the impact that they have on gut flora. When you drink soda with artificial sweeteners, it produces substances in the intestines that are able to pass through the blood-brain barrier into the brain. Aspartate, which is an excitatory amino acid and neurotransmitter, is released from the artificial sweetener aspartame during digestion. Neurotransmitters such as aspartate and glutamate can easily cross this blood-brain barrier. The problem lies in excessive amounts of these excitatory neurotransmitters gaining access to the brain, which can result in nerve cell death within both the brain and spinal cord. Aspartame and glutamate can accumulate to levels that are toxic, and this is particularly concerning when it comes to the developing nervous systems and brains of growing children. Aspartame is metabolized in the GI tract into methanol, phenylalanine, and aspartic acid. Methanol is then converted into formaldehyde, which can lead to neurological oxidation. Oxidative stress is associated with neurodegenerative diseases and brain aging. Formaldehyde is a known carcinogen that is associated with depression, mood swings, and a susceptibility to headaches. I think we should just leave formaldehyde to the embalming industry. Lastly, diet soda increases the risk of developing cancer. Aspartame is a known carcinogen that is associated with DNA damage and increased frequency of chromosomal aberrations and cancer. Add to this the impact that artificial sweeteners have on obesity, gut flora and the immune system, and you have a recipe for dysfunction and disease. These toxic sweeteners have been linked to certain types of cancer, including leukemia, lymphoma, and liver cancer. The takeaway here is please ditch the diet soda and all soda for that matter if you have cancer, have several risk factors for cancer, or have any type of inflammatory condition, or if you are not at your ideal weight. Drinking diet soda will most definitely sabotage your weight loss goals. Obesity in itself is a risk factor for cancer, so this is a serious issue. Simply put, drinking diet soda is not worth the risk, not to mention it offers zero nutritional value. If you enjoy fizzy drinks, consider substituting diet soda with healthier alternatives like sparkling water or even Zevia. If you've never tasted that, it's really good. You would never know that it's a substitute for your regular carbonated drinks. Both your immune system and the scales will thank you. Did you realize that diet soda posed so many risks? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching this short video.